Good morning, scholars. Happy Friday. You made it to the end of the week. Today's lesson, module six, lesson 17, we're going to shift away from our discussion of parallel and perpendicular lines and focus on symmetric figures. We're going to draw symmetric figures using distance and angle measurement from the line of symmetry. Symmetric figures are mirror images. So if you have one image, you're drawing an image that looks exactly like the one you're given around a line of symmetry. We'll talk about what all of this means in just a bit. In today's lesson, our pages are going to be page 157 to 158. That's your problem set pages. We're going to go over all the questions, so I'd like you to follow along and take notes on those two pages. Like we always do, those two pages are going to help you with your independent practice pages on 159 and 160. Let's begin with problem one. Problem one says, draw to create a figure that is symmetric about AD. Now let's think about these vocab words here. I have the word symmetric, and at the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned that symmetric means a mirror image. So I've been given a figure here. What I'm expected to do is draw an image just like it, a mirror image. Well, where do I draw it? The problem says symmetric about AD. This about AD, line AD, means that we're drawing it over line AD. So you'll notice here's point A, here's point D, this is line AD. And to draw a symmetric image about line AD, I would pretend like I'm taking this image here and I'm flipping it over this line so that the symmetric image would be over here. So I'm just drawing it on this side here. <laughs> to draw this line, I'm going to go step by step. I notice that this figure has a segment AB, there's a segment BC, and a segment CD. I'm going to start with AB here. AB line A, point A is here, point B is here. If I take that and flip it over, point A is already on line AD, so it would stay there. And I would pretend like I'm extending it this way to get to point B over there. And so my new symmetric part of A, B would be this one here. Does it look like it got flipped over? It does. Next, I'm going to do B, C. So B goes straight down vertically to connect to C. I already have that point that is symmetric to B, so I would just go straight down, and that would be my symmetric line or symmetric segment of B, C. Now the remaining part is C, D. Like point A, Point D is already on the line AD, so it's not going to move. It has to stay there because we're going symmetric about AD. All I need to do is connect this that was symmetric to C to that right there. And now I have an image that is symmetric about AD, and this image here was the original, and this image here is my mirror image. The biggest takeaway that I want you to get from this is this. Symmetric means a mirror image. And if it says about something, whatever that line is that it's about means the line that you're flipping an image over to create that mirror picture. All right, let's take it up a notch just a little bit. Problem two says, Draw precisely to create a figure that is symmetric about HI, line HI. Here's that word symmetric again. Symmetric should make you think of a mirror image. About HI means that here is HI, here's line HI, and we're flipping the image over this line. So H and I are already on the line, so we would keep them there, and the points that we would be flipping over would be J, K, and L. But the trick here is this. Notice HI, line HI, is not going down vertically like this, the way the problem one did. This one is a little bit slanted over. 
that means that when we're drawing the points, we're going to have to be a little bit careful and make, and make sure that they're also flipped over as well, or a little slanted over. It might not make sense now, but let me go through this step by step, okay? So point I, I'm going to start with I this time. I is already on the line, so I'm not going to do much with I. I'm going to leave it there because I need it to be about each I. Point L connects to point I, and you'll notice that it is going diagonal. And so to flip L over this line, it's going to have to go diagonal in that opposite direction, like that. You'll have to twist your head over just a little bit to see it. Next, I'm going to connect the L to the K. Here is the line that's symmetric over point L. And if you're looking at the original, L to K goes downward. And so the symmetric one is also going to go a little bit downward, but out as well. And this is because we're going about a slanted line HI. Next, from the original, we have K that is connected to J. This is the line that was symmetric for K. So I'm going to draw a line that goes up to J. And lastly, connecting J to H right there. So to make this a little bit easier, on your packet, you can move your paper over so that line HI is lying flat or is lying vertically. We can't quite do that on the slide, so you can either tilt your head over or it might be easier if you just move your paper over until HI is lying vertically and then it looks exactly like problem one and you can draw the symmetric image. All right, moving on to number three. Number three says, complete the following construction in the space below. A, plot three non-collinear points, D, E, and F. The word non-collinear means not on the same line, right? Non, not, collinear, same line. So anywhere in this space, I need to draw three points, D, E, and F, and they can't be in the same horizontal line, same vertical line or same diagonal line, sort of randomly spaced out, okay? So here's my first point, point D. Here's my second point, point E. And here's my third point, point F. So I have made those points connected to each other. And then I went ahead and connected uh, D, F as well. So from B, we kind of skipped ahead, draw line D, E, line D, E, line EF, and finally line DF. All right, G, uh, C, plot point G and draw the remaining sides such that quadrilateral DEFG is symmetric about DF. So there's a lot happening here. The problem is asking me to put point G somewhere on this other side here, but it has to be in a way that wherever I put point G, and then connect all of those points, it looks exactly like this triangle here. So um, I'm going to put point G directly opposite from point E. That way, when I connect that point G to D and to F, then it looks exactly like this triangle DEF that we have. So you can take a ruler or you can use your pencil or you can even estimate what the distance is here from line df to point e and that same distance you would put point g right there and then you would connect point g to d point g to f and now you have this triangle here which is symmetric to this triangle here about line df so flipped over that df line Our last problem, problem four, so it's a little bit tricky. Problem four says, Stu says the quadrilateral HIJK, it's this one here, HIJK, is symmetric about line HJ because line IL is equal to line LK. Use your tools to determine Stu's mistake, explain your thinking. Okay, um, so things that are happening here. So the problem says that line hj is the point of symmetry so they're saying that this triangle here 
is symmetric to this triangle here. And the reason is because line IL is equal to line LK. So they're saying this line is equal to this line and therefore it has to be symmetrical. Let's think about this for a second. Do I know a figure is symmetric just because of the line measurement, or is there something else too? There's something else too. So even though line IL is equal to line LK, the lines being equal to each other don't tell us about the angles and whether or not those angles are equal. If, for example, this angle and this angle were equal to this angle and this angle, then yes. If this angle were equal to this angle and this angle were equal to this angle, then yes. Symmetry is made up of two factors, lines being equal to each other and the angles being equal to each other as well. Stu doesn't say anything about angles being equal, so we can't really conclude that this is symmetrical without having Stu use his protractor or some other kind of tool to measure the actual angles, all right? Even without a protractor, though, with just by looking at angles, we can draw some conclusions, okay? So the first one is that angle LJK is not equal to angle LJI. Let's first find LJK. This is angle LJK, L, J, K. And that angle is not equal to angle L, J, I. I didn't even need a protractor to draw these lines here for me to see that this angle here is wider or bigger than this angle here. That's, some, that's a difference that you can very visibly see with your eyes. There's another uh, angle that's not equal, right? Angle LHK, right here, we have LHK, so a small acute angle is not equal to angle LHI. One of them seems rather bigger than the um, acute angle here. So one acute angle has a greater degree than the other acute angle. These are angles that you will practice measuring in your iReady lessons with a online protractor that you can manipulate to see what the measurement of these angles actually are. Moving on to your homework, that was it for our problem set. Your homework is on pages 159 to 160. As you're working on that homework, you can watch the video again. You can look over your notes from the problem set or you can reach out to me. I will put a homework helper video in the description that you can also watch to help you with your homework. It goes over the homework problems with you as you're working. All right. That's it for today, scholars. I hope you have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I will see you on Monday for our next lesson. Bye, scholars.